Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg on this cloudy pizza day. Yeah. No pretty sunrise this morning. Now speaking of the sunrise, uh, the, the air, hot air balloon that you saw on yesterday's sunrise, that was the real thing. I didn't dub that in. <laughs> I used to get to see a lot of those. Now it's probably because I'm not outside in the mornings early like I used to be. I used to walk to work a lot. This would go back 25, 30 years ago. And quite often in the uh, summer mornings in the early, it was nice and still, uh, you'd see this balloon coming up and slowly drifting over the city. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really nice to see. Uh, most of them were from Remax Realty. Uh, you'd see this Remax balloon, and it, it, was, it was sort of a common thing here in Winnipeg. Anyway, enough about air, hot air balloons. <laughs> uh, now, I just a moment ago paged back in my manual to step number five. And, and the reason being is because I was wondering why it was when I was emptying out the rest of my 10 N sprues, I came across these little N12s. And uh, I was thinking, you know, how, how come we got so many extras? And then I remembered, on the Missouri kit, uh, they obviously needed more. Maybe we'll look it up later, just for the fun of it. Anyway, uh, for the Iowa, we needed 53. So I'm sure I made up 53. In fact, I, I have a faint recollection of meticulously going through one after the other. Uh, now, I, I, should, I should mention here, I think that uh, uh, Paul, like military modeler Paul, uh, when, when he made these up, I, I believe he made them up out of the, the Ponto set. And it, if I'm not mistaken, each one of these required 11 separate parts of, of photo etch. And uh, he did it. Uh, so anyway, uh, these ones here in the Iowa, they, they only took two separate parts. There was a little photo etch shield that got glued on each one of these. And I thought, oh, I got to do this 53 times. <laughs> but imagine if I had to do it like uh, 11 pieces. Uh, I think I indicated yesterday, I, I don't think I could cope with that. Uh, it's just not, just not something I like to do. We're, we're all different, you know. We're all different. Uh, anyway, yeah, step five. That, that seems like a thousand years ago in some ways. In other ways, it seems like yesterday. Okay, let's, let's get ahead here to where we are right now, which is back in step 49. I, I did earlier this morning nip off all the rest of the pieces off the end spruce, so we're, we're ready to go here. Um, okay, oh, uh, so one of the viewers reminded me what it was, that, that little axle thing that I called a... Uh, uh, what did I call it? The journal? It's actually called a trunnion. And <laughs> when he, when I read it, I thought, oh yeah, a trunnion, right. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's a trunnion, not a journal. Uh, you know, where the, where the, where the barrels were hooked onto and they swing up and down on. Sort of a pivot point, like the fulcrum. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, what, what else was I going to mention here this morning? Uh, Hmm. Can't remember. Uh, well, I guess uh, maybe uh, <laughs> speaking of memory, I was out, outside talking to my neighbor earlier this morning and I heard Missy the dog barking. So I knew she was at my door wanting a treat and sure enough. And uh, <laughs> I go out and, and uh, Missy's just uh, hopping around and all exuberant and excited and uh, my neighbor says... Uh, uh, she has no shame. <laughs> yeah, uh, such a sweet little dog. Anyway, and he asked me about my, my scooter. Uh, did I get out on it yesterday or something like that? Or how far did I go? And I told him that I went 56 kilometers on my scooter yesterday. And what I did was, what, before I left the house, I pushed the reset button on the, uh, on the odometer for, for the trip indicator. 
And then I checked it when I got back and it was 56 kilometers. And he says, uh, well, that's about 30 miles. <laughs> he thinks like me. Anyway, uh, yeah, I said, he says, well, where all did you go? So I was trying to remember the names of the different streets and the names would not come. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny. We're trying to remember the names of stuff. It just, uh, it's, uh, the uh, the old rememberer ain't what it used to be. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I, I should check and see how, how many kilometers total is on that scooter. I believe there's a, around 1,500, and I think it's around 1,500 kilometers on my e-bike. Uh, <laughs> so that's like... Uh, I'll, I'll, dub, I'll dub the exact amount in down below so you get to see it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so it's like uh, 3,000 kilometers or 2,000 miles uh, between the two of them uh, since the, uh, the end of May. So uh, I've been sitting in the saddle quite a bit. Good thing it wasn't a horse or I'd be saddle sore, wouldn't I? Okay, uh, Let's uh, let's get going here. I don't know how much I can actually do on camera. I'll nip off enough. I'll clean up enough parts to do, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, one one complete unit, and then the rest of them I'm just going to have to do off camera and just. Uh, I'm I'm going to estimate it's going to take me about two hours. It's it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I, I kind of like to do that sort of thing uh, sometimes in the evening, just when it's nice and quiet and relaxing, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes here. Uh, today's episode might be kind of uh, gimpy. Uh, <laughs> well, it's pizza day. That's that's one one thing to look forward to. In about uh, oh an hour and a half. Yeah, boy, where'd the morning go? What was I doing this morning? Oh yeah, I was nipping off parts. Okay, so we got uh, 10 sprues now to hang on the wall if I want to be bothered. But you know, I think my wall's starting to look cluttery enough. And, and I've run out of little pins for pinning them to the, to the wall. <laughs> yeah, uh, when I get my house repainted, uh, that'll take care of all those little pinholes. But uh, I probably won't. I, that is, I probably won't get it repainted. <laughs> I'll just live with it the way it is. Uh, Okay, uh, let's uh, get ourselves uh, enough parts to make one piece here and uh, see what we can do. Okay, I have not cleaned the flashing off of anything here yet. But I'm noticing that this part here, which I just moments ago realized is actually the hydraulic cylinder that opens and closes this. Oh, by the way, one of the one of the viewers, or a couple of viewers, I think, mentioned that there's a hatch here. Uh, I think it was Jeff. Jeff mentioned that the that the turret captain, or whatever you would call him, he would come out of the hatch here. And remember we had a little gun sight here, and I was con con confused. Why would there be a gun sight behind something like that, but now that I notice that there's a hatch here where you'd stick your head up, then you can understand that this part here, when it goes on, is, is some sort of a, a shield to show, you know, protect them from f flying debris or something. You know, it's amazing how we did things back in the 40s, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I guess people were expendable. And, okay, we won't go there. And, uh, Okay, I think the thing to do is to, to glue this, this piece on first. And then we will know exactly how far up or down to put this hydraulic cylinder. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's just not going to uh, be in the exact right place. It won't be believable should somebody slip on their macro lens when they're looking at my model. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we talked about this piece being the uh, being the trunnion, didn't we? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here is what to do. Well, I guess the next thing we should do is get all the flashing cleaned off. This one here is going to be the hardest one to, to do safely. Let's put the macro lens on and see if we can very carefully get some of the flashing off of this. 
and then, then it'll probably be pizza time. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but you notice on the side of the turret, it's got those two little pegs, you might call them. And I was kind of concerned that I might be getting these 16s and 17s in the wrong place. But if you'll notice that it's sort of keyed, there, you know, so that if you're watching what you're doing, uh, you would, uh, you shouldn't have any problem getting these the right way. So in other words, I, now that I know which way they face, they they face ba basically forward, and uh, yeah, we, we shouldn't have too much trouble. These two these two uh, pegs are for the 17s, and uh, on the other side, see if I can. I almost lost it there. Turn it around. This one here, that that would be for the 16. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get the flashing off of this now. I'm going to use uh, Chris's extra sharp file here. Uh, let's let me uh, refocus. I might be a little bit too much closer or further away than I should be here. Okay. We should be able to hold this thing down here. Try not to get my fingers in the blocking the light. I need a manicure. Oh, thanks, Chris. I knew this file would come in handy for something someday. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Now I know when you're watching something this, like this with a macro lens, it, it looks really, really crude, doesn't it? Because everything's so close. Okay, let's just turn this around. And do the other one. Whoops. Don't want to be blocking the light. Now, all being well. Let's see if this looks like it's going to fit. Well, I guess I guess we can't try it because it's got the uh, flashing on it. Let's get that flashing off, and then we'll try it. All right, let's do another part. Okay, did I do that cleanly, or is there a lot of stuff still on there? I, I, I imagine that after I get some extra thin on there, the extra thin is probably going to take care of that. I'm, I'm not going to try and scrape that any cleaner than I've already got it. We'll just it's, it's just going to have to do here. Okay, so we got our hydraulic cylinder done. Oh, what else have we got here? Okay, get that out of the way. Now... These things here, I don't want to lose that, uh, I guess you might call it uh, a flange. So, uh, what will be the best way for that? Try and, would it be maybe, okay, I think maybe the best way would be to cut it. It's, See what's going to happen here. Here we go. Oh, I took the flange, or at least part of it. How can I save that? Maybe, maybe on this one I'll, I'll come at a bit more of an angle. Oh, here maybe if I went like this. 
where is it? It's, uh, I think that the trumpeter could have designed their sprue just a little bit differently, but on the other hand, I, I you know, I'm, Am I going to be cutting the flange off? Come on. It's hard to hold down. Let's try that. Oh. Oh. I don't have extras of these either. I do not have extras. Well, you know, I, I guess once it's maybe on the side, when it's when it's mounted on the side, it's you know this basic top is is the right shape. Um, you know what? I think I might be best trying to do the the other. Uh, well, how many pieces is there? There's there's uh, thirty altogether, so there's twenty nine more to go. So I I think when I when I do the the rest of these. I'm probably best trying to do it off camera and I'll be able to hold it up a little bit better to my face. Uh, I'm just going to do one off camera and then we'll take a look at it and, and we'll, we'll compare it to this one right here. Okay, this is the first one we did. And this is the one that I just did off camera. It's, some, it's somewhat better. Now, once again, when we're looking close at it like this, it doesn't look all that great. But I think there's more and more of the flange on there. Um, yeah, and as for this piece here, yeah, there's there's no little hole or anything. So I guess that's that's supposed to actually, you know, mount on the 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 uh, on on the top of this peg here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and and uh, let's let's find something else here. That this should be easy. Okay, get my cutter right. Maybe I'll get this out of the way. And here we go. Yeah, that that came off pretty good. Now this this part is going to be hidden on on the inside of the turret. So uh, yeah. I'm not going to do any more to that. Now what about the what about a barrel here? It's also going to be on the inside of the turret. So. I may as well try and do a nice job if I can. And this part has to come off. And sort of push it up tight and there we go. Yeah, it's a shame that's not going to be seen because there's you know some detailing going on there. I guess this would be part of the uh, breech mechanism. Now, we got this thing here, don't we? What will be the best way to nip that? As far as I can see, there is only basically one piece of flashing on it. And this is it. I'm just, just checking here to make sure I'm not taking off that detail. That, that came pretty good. It came pretty good. Like all the rest of that stuff is going to have to just stay on there. Okay, so we got that. Okay, now we got part of the trunnion mechanism here. Also going to be hidden inside, so we don't need to worry too much about it. Okay, so there was another one somewhere. 
I hope I'm remembering to keep these in the, in the vision for the camera. Nothing more frustrating than going to a lot of work to do a lot of close-up, you know, detailing like this. And then when you go into editing, you find out <laughs> you're way, uh, way uh, off the, uh, out, of, out of the scene. Okay, that, that's all right. Now, we got this part right here. And uh, let's get it flush as we can. And as flush as we can, this is also going to be basically hidden. Okay. These, uh, to me, a cutter is really cut nice and nice and flush. Okay, now we were going to see how, how well this all fit together, weren't we? I might have to recompose here. onions in this one but there, there is uh, there is mushrooms um, and there's olives in there somewhere and then and there's, there's lots of uh, mozzarella cheese yeah which I don't dare eat just before I go to bed okay anyway let's uh, let's uh, cut ourselves a, a chunk here somebody was to hand me these pieces, at least this piece and this piece, and they were to say put that together without looking at the manual, I would have a tendency to have this, fla this flange that I'm holding onto in the down position because I would think it's probably going to go in into a hole in the deck, but actually there's a peg in the deck, I just went and checked a few minutes ago to make sure, that, that does come up through this, and so the way it's pictured in the manual here, so let me move in a bit, is the way it is supposed to go. Um, now we, we were going to see how well this fit together now, weren't we? So this has got to go on the inside. Now of course, after, I'm not going to glue it together now because we have to, you know, get all our little parts fastened onto it, but that, that's a, a really nice fit. I'll probably use the uh, the uh, extra thin quick setting there. Yeah, but before we do that, before we do that, uh, gotta get it out now, we've gotta get our, uh, our trunnion and everything assembled, and uh, the barrel's stuck in it, and is there anything else that has to go on? No, this all goes on afterwards. Okay, let's let's uh, recompose here and uh, see if we can do that. That's a nice tight fit. I imagine that's a that's a good thing because then we can adjust the barrels and they're not going to flop around. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. Well 
this one's kind of loose. Okay. <clears throat> now. This will go on here. Like so. I'm trying to do this on camera and it's kind of awkward, isn't it? Okay. We pretty much got it. Okay, that, that's the way it's got to go. I don't think I need to glue these. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna glue the the bottom. And uh, yeah, that's. I think that's seated about as good as it's gonna get. And I'm gonna use the uh, just the ordinary extra thin here. All right, this is not a piece of pizza. You don't need to rotate it all day long. Let's uh, just let that dry, I guess you'd say. And uh, might take a little while. What time we got here? You know, it's it's 2:41 already in the afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we're going to have to uh, leave the rest of the assembly until tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we're going to see you tomorrow.